Hey, what's up everyone? Um, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the uh, changes and new stuff that I basically uploaded to the GitHub for the Arduino Pixel Controller uh, called the Pixel Node. Uh, this is a pretty cool package if you haven't uh, read up on it or seen it yet. Basically, this has been in development for a while, but it's got two variations as of uh, this week, and it's reached a good stable point, which means you can start using it in your own projects. Uh, but the Pixel Node is kind of a family of software for Arduino based platforms. Right now we're supporting two main uh, types of devices. We have the Node MCU and we have the Teensy. And within those two, we have the ESP8266 and the ESP32, which are you know basically an older and a newer variation of the Node MCU. And then on the other side of the serial based devices, we have the Teensy 3.2 supported and the 3.6 supported. I recommend the 3.6 if you're going that route. It's just going to be faster and better. It's newer, more updated. Uh, but the 3.2 might be a little bit cheaper, and if you have some lying around, you can also use those just fine as well. All right, so this GitHub is pretty straightforward. Uh, I've basically consolidated and changed it a lot uh, recently so that everything is a little bit easier to find. In addition to just poking around in the files, I also highly recommend checking out the wiki because this is where everything's documented very very uh, completely so if you go here uh, the home page is going to tell you a little bit of information the boards uh, supported and the protocols that are mainly supported you can also find some older photos and kind of R&D stuff which might be interesting if you're curious about the history of the project but uh, other than that uh, there's basically a couple different ways you might want to approach using this uh, repository so a you may want to dive in and do your own programming uh, you might want to fork this and do your own um, modification of it as well. If that's the case, you're going to probably want to read through all of this. It's all pretty relevant. Uh, but if you basically want to uh, flash your device, if you already have one of these and you want to get it working with GeoPix uh, ASAP and just don't want to waste any time, you just want to get right to the LEDs and the pixel mapping, then I will show you kind of the best route to go forwards for that in here in just a moment. But first, I want to go ahead and walk you through kind of the basic uh, anatomy of this wiki because it's kind of worth noting. So we have over here on the right we have things broken down into two sections. We have a section for your uh, node MCUs and a section for your teensies. Uh, these two sections are very similar. The only difference is the uh, node MCU has a, some extra functionality and features built into it that the teensy does not. And these are mostly uh, going to be found in the pixel commands HTTP endpoints and then some stuff here in the pull reply and the, the protocol is slightly different. Uh, the node MCU has a header where the serial teensy does not. So anyways, uh, definitely check this out and read through it if you are planning to do your own work. But if you just want to get down to the pixel mapping and start using these things in your project and you don't really want to worry about the code or even installing anything that you don't have to install, uh, the simplest way forwards for both devices is going to be found through the link that says programming your board. Uh, you can also uh, read through here in the main body, you'll see that I have something called the Easy Flasher, which is what I'm going to show you. And I have a different variant of the Easy Flasher for the Teensy and the Node MCU. So you can also just click here, it'll take you right to it. So if you go to the Node MCU version, we'll check that out first. It's going to take you to a page called Flashing Your Arduino, which is uh, actually programming your board right here. It's the same link. Uh, so this will walk you through the IDE stuff, but you can pretty much ignore all of this. We want to jump straight to the second section here, which is going to get you um, basically on the way to flashing that thing and just having it working. So the first thing you want to do is install USB drivers for the Node MCU. Uh, these may already be installed on your system. Uh, it just depends on what drivers you've installed previously, but if you're not sure, it can't hurt to go ahead and open this up and just go ahead and go to this page and download a universal to universal Windows 10 installer and just kind of install that. If you have an older version of Windows, you can check those out as well. Uh, so once you've done that, you're going to want to download the Easy Flash Node MCU. And so I'm going to download this real quick to uh, my desktop just to show you what's going on. And I'm going to extract this also to my desktop and once we've done that uh, you'll open this up and you'll see a few files here and this is the node MCU easy flasher uh, just keep that in mind so you can pretty much ignore all this. this is just a pretty much a pre-compiled program all you need to do is plug in your um, 
node MCU into your computer after you've installed these drivers um, right here. And so once you've installed the drivers and you've plugged in your node MCU, you should check your device manager. So go to Windows key and just type in device manager. And you're going to pull up your um, uh, device manager here. And you just want to uh, check to make sure you have something under COM ports here. So ports, COM, and LPT. I actually have a Teamsy plugged in right now. Um, so we're going to ignore that. But if you had a uh, node MCU and you had your drivers installed you would see some more generic name and you'd have a com and a number So that's what you're looking for you want to have just one if you have more than one plugged in the script will not know Which one you're trying to program and it'll probably just try and program the first one it finds uh, So check that make sure that's good to go And then once it is all you do is you double click on this exe right here, and it's going to open up the flasher It's gonna attempt to connect and for me this is gonna fail because I have a uh, a Teamsy connected instead, and the Teamsy is obviously not going to respond with the right information. Uh, so it's going to do this, it's going to time out, and it's going to fail. But if you have a Node MCU connected, all you have to do is double click that. It's going to take about 30 seconds, it's going to install, and you are done. After that, you can pretty much um, connect to the Enviral uh, hotspot that it's going to create, which is what it does when it can't find uh, a known SSID. You're going to go through the pages there, it's going to basically uh, allow you to connect to Wi-Fi and if you're curious what this process looks like it's fully uh, documented here connect to a Wi-Fi network uh, do this on your phone this is the best way to do it it's gonna be the uh, most straightforward uh, and so once you've gotten that connected uh, you can pretty much move on to whatever else you want to move on to next I recommend trying the uh, pulling config and streaming pixel data uh, touch designer files if you're not a touch designer person and you don't want to get into that that's fine too you can just go straight to geopix and you can start working with it in geopix as well so all right before i go to geopix and show you how you work with these two devices let me go ahead and show you the serial one it's a little bit different and it's probably worth uh, checking out so down here under serial we're going to click on programming your board again and when you open this up again this is the IDE stuff we can ignore that we want to jump straight down to the easy flasher so if you look at this section that's a little bit different actually with newer Windows 10 installations you actually probably don't need to install drivers but if you want to or if you're not seeing those drivers uh, or if you're not seeing that Teensy show up in your device manager when you plug it in uh, you want to go ahead and just install the Arduino IDE and then install Teensy Duino, and uh, that's going to get the driver set up for you. Uh, there might be another way to get those set up, but that's the simplest way. So uh, just try that out if you're having issues, but I think if you're on Windows 10, you should probably be able to just connect and use it right away. All right, so this works similar. You just download the Easy Flash Teensy, and I'm going to download this to my desktop as well. And once it's downloaded, going to simply uncompress it. I'm doing this off screen, but I'll bring it back here in just a minute. So once you open this folder on your computer, you're going to see a much uh, more simplified folder structure than the last one. And that's because uh, the creator of the Teensy already made a flasher utility. It's quite useful. And so if you just double click on this, it's going to open up somewhere on your monitor. And so it's a very small window. And once this is open, all you have to do to program your Teensy is uh, turn on the auto button, click this button to open a hex file, and locate the proper hex file for the Teensy device you have. So if you have a 3.2, you want to use this one. If you have a 3.6, uh, you're going to use this one instead. Uh, I believe I have the 3.2 in here with me now. So if I just open this uh, and I hit uh, the button on the Teensy, it's going to program that after a few moments go by. Uh, and once that happens, if you have any LEDs connected, with the Octo adapter board, you'll see that the um, pixels will turn on to a kind of a warm yellow, which is their default warm up color. You can change that later if you'd like, but that is a sign that everything went correctly. Uh, I'm not going to do this here because I already have my Teensy programmed and it's locked up in a box with screws, so it's a little bit hard to get to. But basically, all you need to do is hit this button on the Teensy and wait a few minutes and or wait a few seconds, and it's going to be programmed and ready to go after that. All right, so once you've basically flashed your Teensy or your Node MCU, you're ready to kind of dive into Geopix. So 
Uh, to kind of show you that, let me see if I miss anything here. Uh, no, okay, so the first thing, really the only thing you need to do to get this working in GeoPix is to go to Tools, Pixel Node Wizard, and do a quick scan. And that's gonna take a couple seconds to, to basically load the results. And so what this is loading is it's going to search your, your network, your home router, the default router you're connected to, and it's also going to search all of your COM ports, at least the ones that exist, and it's going to basically create a list. So I have a bunch of these wireless node MCUs around my house doing various lighting things, uh, and this is the one I have here at my desk, so this is one we want to worry about. So over here we have parameters that we can configure. You'll notice that UDP streaming port goes dark if you are working with a serial device. Uh, because there's no port to deal with there in terms of UDP. Uh, but other than that, everything is pretty much the same. You can set your name, which has to be less than 64 characters. You have a warm-up color that you can set. Uh, you have a chunk size, and you have a pixels per strip, and you have a milliamps per pixel, and you have amps. So um, a quick recommendation uh, for chunk size and pixels per strip, I would recommend not changing these. Uh, if you're working with GeoPix, the default that gets programmed is actually uh, the ideal um, situation. The only thing you might want to change is the pixels per strip if you're really worried about how much data you're sending out. So, for example, if you have two or three teensies and they're all pushing you know, 100 pixels per strip, you don't want to waste the uh, extra bandwidth sending all these null pixels. So, if that's the case, uh, you may want to kind of set that up as uh, something different, but... Keep in mind that the defaults are recommended. If you're not dealing with too many teensies or if it just works, then just keep it where it is and that's probably best. So, all right, milliamps per pixel. This is also another one you probably wanna leave alone. Uh, most of the time you're driving a strip with um, each pixel being 60 milliamps. Now, the reason you might wanna change this is say you have uh, a situation where you're dealing with higher wattage pixels, which is a very simple and obvious one. You can just set the uh, milliamp rating for the overall RGB uh, package, right? So this is actually the kind of average sum total for what red, green, and blue produce in milliamps uh, when fully maxed out, full white. Uh, another situation that might warrant changing this is if you have uh, two strips in parallel, right, which are feeding off the same data line, uh, then in that case you may want to double this to 120 because now you're effectively saying, um, well, you have two pixels per logical pixel, so you know your your power consumption is going to be higher. And the reason why this matters, uh, in conjunction with amps limit, is uh, the pixel node code will actually dynamically limit the brightness of uh, your data as it's coming in to keep it from going over a certain amps limit. And so the information you need to calculate this is obviously your pixels per strip, uh, and eight strips is assumed because we're dealing with a teensy. Uh, the milliamps per pixel and the total amps is your threshold. So you don't want to cross this. And so these two variables are calculated along with the pixel values in real time to kind of keep you from crossing that. It's very useful. Uh, it lets you pretty much uh, get a little bit further with a cheaper power supply, a smaller power supply. And when you are crossing that amps threshold, it just dials back the brightness so that you don't tax that uh, power supply into quitting or shutting down or anything like that. So uh, this is... 45. I'm actually going to leave this at 45. This power supply I have is actually 60 amp, but I tend to not like pushing things as far as the max for the power draw because you just never know. Um, and it's plenty bright anyways. So this is basically um, all there is to configure. I can click program and you can't see this, but over here on my desk here, I've got the lights that went off and they faded back to a warm yellow. And you can see down here, successfully programmed COM7. Uh, if you don't get this message then it didn't program properly and there's some issues uh, but pretty much once you've programmed it and if you are just you know getting started for the first time i recommend don't not changing any of these settings uh, especially the chunk size and pixels per strip uh, but you can pretty much just select your uh, your item here and you can just import this into the scene and this is going to take a few seconds because it's creating some nodes but once you've done that you'll see that we have uh, a device with eight fixtures attached to it. And uh, these fixtures are not really configured in any particular way. They're just kind of here to show you, okay, you've got eight outputs to use. And then the pixel node serial device is however configured. Uh, and you don't have to worry about 
touching these settings at all, it should be uh, properly configured to just start working. So for example, if I just go ahead and delete everything but this first fixture, uh, and if I go into hall mode and just make a quick um, LED panel, I have a 10 by 10 grid over here plugged in. So if I just do a generator, we should be uh, good to go. And I can just pretty much hit the um, active on toggle and we should be outputting to that device and good to go. So that's pretty much all you need to do to get running and get this moving. And once you've done that, uh, you should have data coming out. And if you see data right now at this point, then you can just pretty much keep duplicating your fixtures and making more and setting up your scene until you are happy with the results. So uh, that's pretty much all you have to do with that. Uh, the pixel node U works the same way. Uh, U is for UDP, so if you have uh, the other type, instead of the serial connected, if you go over here to the pixel node and do a scan, which we've already done, uh, you can import any of these as well. And these work pretty much the same way. If I import bookshelf, uh, you'll see that it comes in with just one fixture because uh, the node MCUs are a one output device, so it kind of does that just to let you know. Uh, but you can kind of set these up the same way do a generator, create your strip or your panel or whatever shape you have. And then when you're ready, just turn it on and you should be, you should be good to go. So that's pretty much all there is to using this in Geopix. This is only available in the most recent um, build of Geopix, which is actually not a stable build, but it's out there for you to use. So if you go to geopix.io, um, you can pretty much get to it one of two ways. You can go to the release notes or you can go to more alternate builds. And then here we'll have a list of all the builds that you can download. But at the very top, you'll have the uh, latest experimental, which is a new thing I'm, I'm playing around with. Just offer that and you can download it. And uh, this will be the one that you want to use with your, uh, your new TZ and node MCU code. So that's pretty much all there is to say. This is an experimental, so this is not a version bump. This is actually, while it says 2.0 here, you may actually need to uninstall your current version and reinstall it with the installer. So uh, just keep that in mind. All right, that pretty much sums it up for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope that's helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.